how many of you attended the European Academy of Neurology uh, Congress? Uh, it was meant to be hosted uh, in Paris uh, from the 23rd to the 26th of May, but it had to be postponed or cancelled uh, because of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And the organizer of the Congress decided to reinitiate it and made it uh, a virtual Congress. Uh, the advantage of the virtual Congress is that there were uh, over 40,000 registered uh, attendees uh, who went onto the uh, platform uh, to watch various components uh, of the meeting. And I think that actually opened it up because it was free for the uh, whole world to register and watch uh, cutting edge uh, science being uh, presented in relation to neurology in general and from our perspective in, in relation to multiple sclerosis. Um, Jola, did you actually log in and watch? Yeah, so I watched a couple of sessions and I found them really interesting. Um, but the it's weird being a virtual session because you lose out on the networking, you lose out on bumping into people in the corridor who might drag you to a session that you had no interest in, but you want to carry on a conversation with them. So you did stick to your own timetable rather than just fall into a session that you ended up learning from, which I felt like, which is often the advantage of a face-to-face -face conference is learning from the random topics that you didn't think you wanted to know about. So you ended to stick to the, what you already know rather than going for anything unusual. It's also strange watching things in your own environment. So you're not immersed in the whole sort of conference field to the same extent, which sometimes could be an advantage or disadvantage. So you're not stuck trying to work out the, due to jet lag, what time something's on or, or things like that. But also in terms of, it means that you could end up getting distracted if you've got children or anything else that you get distracted by, oh, actually my favorite TV program's on now, I'll go and watch that rather than watch this webinar. And it did feel a bit much sometimes having six or seven hours of lectures in one day straight. It's not nice to sit at your computer just watching these things back to back, which somehow in a lecture theater in a conference we do and we don't think about as much. What did you think, Gavin? Well, I was, I was a speaker and um, I personally didn't like the fact that they didn't actually think through what a virtual conference should be about. Um, I mean, there's lots of behavioral psychology around how we consume online content and it's not like going to a physical meeting. So they made the mistake of just transferring the program from the original face-to-face -face meeting to the virtual meeting. And there's no way, particularly because it was a beautiful uh, spring weekend in the UK with wonderful sunshine, warm temperatures. There's no way we were gonna sit in front of our computers watching online content all day. And the fact that it was free is a curve ball because it was only free on the weekend and over that uh, uh, the conference. Now, if you wanna access the material, you've got to be a member of the EAN and pay a subscription fee and become a member. And so it's not really accessible after the event. And the whole advantage of virtual meetings is um, the asynchronous, uh, the fact that you can dip in and out and go back later and watch it. So I, I personally think um, it wasn't great in that regard, but um, at least it achieved the objectives of disseminating new information in MS. And I think that's why people need to come to the MS Academy uh, updates because we are going to summarize um, over a, f a, f a few uh, webinars um, why uh, it's important to design virtual meetings uh, to be uh, you know, more interactive. And so uh, p p people can come to our webinars and, and catch up on all the latest and the most uh, relevant uh, uh, topics. Uh, so maybe, Jola, you want to talk about the kind of topics we're going to cover in our webinar series? Yeah, so the webinar series is going to be based over four topics. So we're going to have starting and sequencing DMTs, followed by DMT safety considerations. There's another one on progressive MS, and then a one that will cover the two topics of pediatric MS and NMO. So they're going to be available on the NeuroAcademy website over the next month. And then you are sure to get an email, I will update you, but you're able to watch these when you want. And so you can dip in and out. And they're going to be short, five to ten minutes long, so they're not going to be hours in front of the computer, but it will be key information of some of the faculty and of filming what they found interesting from the conference. So I hope you are enticed to come. I mean, there was some really, really important information presented. So as you realize, conferences uh, 
are one of the main platforms for releasing novel, new, cutting edge science. And uh, um, I won't tell you what it is, but my highlight was almost certainly the release of some brand new data uh, on a new class of therapy uh, with a particular agent that's going to be taken forward into a phase three program. And uh, the uh, uh, advantage of this particular agent is that it's got CNS penetration and it works on mechanisms within the central nervous system. So this is really uh, cutting edge information. So if you want to know about it, please uh, mark the days in your diary and come to our webinars.